Good morning, Washington Church. Hey, we're going to do the call to worship and get this party started praising Jesus because that's what we came here to do and see and love each other, which you guys are doing a great job of right now. Good morning, Kieran. Yeah, everybody come get your praise hankies, prankies available for children at heart and children, children. All right, let's do the call to worship. How great is our God? How awesome are your deeds? Lord, you are gracious and compassionate. You are my rock, my shield, and my fortress. Therefore, we will sing your praises and speak of your goodness. Jesus, you are worthy of all worship and praise. Reveal yourself to us. Search the world.
Kids, you can come up for the kids' message and greet somebody around you, fam. If all the kids could come up to the front, that would be great. And right now we're just greeting our neighbor, saying hello. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. Hi, neighbor. It is, it is. Hello, hello. You coming up here with me? Okay. Really, anybody can come up here if you want. It doesn't have to be kids. You want to come sit on the floor with me and, and talk about Jesus? I'm down for that. Oh. Good morning, everybody. How are you guys doing? Doing, doing well. Who here is a confident reader? Do you love reading? That's it. Would you want to read? Can you read something for me? Is that okay? No? Who's willing to read out loud? Tessa, you can do it? All right. Will you just read that verse? Can you see it? Which one? Just the two right there. The right there. Oh, Lord, teach me how you want me to live. Then I will obey your commands. Make me wholeheartedly compated to you. Oh, Lord, my God, I will give you thanks with my whole heart. I will honor your name continuously. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tessa. So there was a couple big words in there, and Tessa did a great job of reading them. Um, so does anybody know, what would the word, what does wholeheartedly mean? Anybody have a guess? You don't have to be right. What do you think? Okay. Ki that's, that's with it. Do you have a do you have a guess? Elena, what? What's wholeheartedly? Boom! Let's go. That's so good. It's kind of it's kind of in the word, right? It's your your whole heart. Your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole your whole body. Everything you do is given to God. That's what it would be to be wholeheartedly committed to you. So I have one more thing. Does anybody, does anybody know what this is? Raise your hand. Is that, do you know what it is? What is it? Oh, that is a great guess. It's very close. It's like an acorn. Anybody else? Oh, close again. It's somebody's favorite football team, even though they're very wrong. <laughs> do you, what? It's a Buckeye. There you go. It's a Buckeye. I got, I have, <laughs> so I have two Buckeyes right here that I found when I was walking, when I was walking in the park. And God, I felt, I felt like God was showing me that we kind of need to be like a Buckeye. And then this verse, this verse showed me that, what that meant. I feel like what does a Buckeye have to do in order, what, what does a Buckeye turn into? What does this little thing turn into? Tree. A big tree, a Buckeye tree. But before a Buckeye, just this little thing like this, becomes a big tree, it has to go into the ground, be buried in dirt, and then it actually smashes and it breaks open. And the little, little, little sprout, the little flower, the little stem comes out of this buckeye and ends up being a big, tall tree like that. So I feel like, I feel like with, what the buckeye was saying is it was wholeheartedly committed to becoming that tree. So I feel like with you guys, if you can think about that, how can I be wholeheartedly? I got to be, I got to be willing to do everything for God and be committed to God. That makes me pretty excited too, Kieran. I'm not going to lie. So when, uh, 
when we see these little things or we see an egg corn on the ground or a walnut or, or some seed, think that how am I being wholeheartedly committed to God so that, so that I can surrender and I could maybe be buried and get dirty and that's okay, but he's going to make me into a big tall tree. That sound cool? All right, guys, let's bow our heads and let's pray that we can be wholeheartedly committed to God. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you for our children. Thank you for the youth of this church. Thank you for their energy. Thank you for um, just the way that they love you. God, would, would, you, would your Holy Spirit just rest on them right now and make them wholly committed to you um, and that we would just rejoice in, in your goodness and in your love for us. Um, make us like the Buckeye that turns into the Buckeye tree. Um, we pray this all in Jesus' name. And all God's children said, thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, I'll see you guys in the red room. Good morning, Washington Church. My name is Jason, and I want to welcome you here, whether you're present here or you're here online. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to be here. Um, you know, when we're singing about nothing is better. I mean, nothing is better than being here and just worshiping together and worshiping a God who's totally worthy of it. So um, if you have not been here before, we do have a welcome card. If you'd please fill it out so we can get to know you. Um, we really appreciate new people and getting to know you. And so if you can kindly do that and put it in um, you know, one of the boxes or drop it off at the Welcome Center. We also have giving boxes. There's one over here. There's one over here. You can give online at washingtonchurch.org slash give, or there's a QR code that's on the bulletin there. And then um, you might see that I'm wearing my name tag. If you don't have one on and you have one, you should totally get it. Like John here needs to find his. Um, but if you don't have one made, you can get a made over there at the Welcome Center, and we'll make sure that you get a cool one that looks like this. And then, I don't know if you guys know, but there's something really cool happening. Washington Church is going to be 150 years old, and so we're going to celebrate that. We're going to celebrate God, um, you know, sustaining us. So on the 16th, um, we are inviting anybody who no longer goes here, who is an out-of-town guest, to gather at Scott Peck's house. So if you know someone who uh, used to come here or used to be a part of the last 150 years, um, invite them to Scott's house for a dinner, and then you're welcome to join them. But then on the 17th, um, we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a worship service and then a luncheon after the service. And so uh, we even have a Facebook page devoted to this. So if you want to join the Facebook page, you can, can go to that QR code there. And then next week, we have baptisms, which is always an awesome thing. So September 10th, we have baptisms. Um, we're going to have a baptisms and ice cream social next week after church. Uh, and the ref refreshing place is going to join us for that. So if you have not yet expressed interest and you are interested in getting baptized, please contact the church office. Um, and then starting on September 24th, we're going to start our community gatherings which are going to take place on Sunday evenings at 5.30. And that will include dinner, fellowshipping together, along with brief teaching, and then breaking into smaller groups to pray and just continue to get to know each other and, and further build our community. And then, as always, something that is an integral part of our worship service is prayer. So if during the service you would like some prayer, find somebody kind of standing around. Or if you just sense God really wants that person to pray for me, go find somebody. Okay, I've done that before, and they are like, what? But I've, I've also experienced some really intimate prayer from somebody who really wasn't on the prayer team and didn't plan to pray for me. So if you want prayer, find somebody. We want to pray for you. We want to connect you with God and hear your concerns or your praises. And so let's worship together. All right, you stand to your feet <laughs> to worship the king. Hmm. I'm so excited, y'all. I feel like this is the space where it really happens. Like some of you might have come to listen to Pastor Jimmy speak this morning, and I know that he has a good word for us, and I'm excited for that part too. But the king of the universe <laughs> wants to speak to you. 
And this is a space that he tells us in his word that he really likes to come meet with us. It says that he likes to inhabit our praises. That means he wants to come and live in us and with us, especially when we lay down everything else that we're thinking about that we have going on in our lives and we just turn our hearts towards him. Like it really is that simple. You don't need <laughs> any of the words that we're about to sing to get you there. It really is just taking your heart and turning it towards the God who created you and who loves you and finding the Father's smile and the Father's delight in you there and allowing that to change you and change your priorities and your perspective. And so that's my invitation to you. And we do have an incredible prayer team that would love to surround you and speak blessing over you. Um, so that if you're having a hard time finding the smile of the Father this morning and allowing his delight and love for you and um, to fill you up and to change your priorities and perspective, that they would be happy to just speak that blessing over you. Um, and we believe that this is where the change is. So let's go after it together.
some of us need to hear that this morning, that we've been doing this series all summer on evangelism. And we have this thing <laughs> in the United States of America that's led into the church for better or worse, that we're defined by what we do. So you come up to somebody and you ask them, okay, what's your name and, and what do you do? It's like the automatic next question. And so many of us struggle with that. And we struggle with it because we weren't made to be defined by what we do. And so I think that there's a release this morning for some of us who need to hear this from the Father, that more than anything that we can do, He just wants us. He wants us broken open. He wants us our whole hearts. It's not about what we can do to perform for Him, what we can do. It's just not about what we can do. He just wants us, us wholehearted before Him. And so we're just going to sing this line over and over. And for those of you who need to hear it from the Father's heart to yours, that's what he wants to sing over you this morning, is that more than anything that you can do, he just wants you.
shake up the grounds of our religion and I think how much we hold religion in value whether it be ritual or just be things we do I just feel God saying that there are some people here even me that need to shake down the walls of all the tradition we have in our lives And we strip away all the religion, the rituals, the things that we do just because, the things that we do just because it's Sunday. Just acknowledging that God's way is better, that he is better than anything that we can ever find, anything that we can ever find joy in. So I want to give you guys time just to contemplate, just think about what those things are things that we do that are just ritual, things that we do that are just religion. I'll give you some time to pray on that, and then we're going to sing that bridge again. So just take some time to ask God to show you what those things are, that tradition. Maybe you think you know what those things are, that are simply religion, the things that we do that we go through the motions every week, every day. So we'll give you some time to pray about that, we're going to sing that bridge again. After we eat, it's time to pray about that.
break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. Your way is better. Your way is better, God. Shake up the ground of all my tradition. Break down the walls of all my religion. making room just wouldn't stop there. Help us rip out here, help us tear down the clutter in our lives that prevents us from making more room for you. Father, just pray that you would overwhelm us with your love, overwhelm us with your grace. Help us see that there is no one better there is nothing better than you. Just pray that we give everything we have to you, that we make you our everything. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. We pray all this in your name. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning, everybody. It's good to uh, be with you again this morning. Uh, a couple things before we get into the message. Um, uh, Bridget had her baby on Wednesday, so all is well. Baby Colette, and she, uh, her and Pat went home on Friday, so they're back home now recovering and, and uh, being parents of two instead of parents of one. So that's exciting. Um, Ann and I are going the opposite direction. We're getting rid of kids out of our house, so we dropped off Grace uh, out in California in Santa Barbara, and that was bittersweet. Um, it, was, it was great. Everything went really well, so we're adjusting to having one at home instead of two at home, and so at different stages of life, uh, and that's good too. That's, that's part, of, part of the journey and part of the plan. Um, I wanted to just share this with you before we jump into the, to the message. You should have gotten a handout. It looks like this. Um, we are in need of help with our kids' ministry. We have a crazy number of kids in this church, um, way more than the average says that we should have. And, and so we need help with that. We just need volunteers um, to pitch in. If you look at this, it says we need two plus with the, with the little ones. Um, we need two plus with the blue room. We need four with the red room. Um, and then we need about five with the K through five. This is a once a month thing that you commit to. Um, those of you who are serving now, thank you so much for doing that. We're not asking you to do more. 
um, but we'd love for other people to get involved. We're going to do some trainings. Um, so just because you say, hey, I'm interested, doesn't mean we're signing you up forever. Um, but we have trainings we're going to take you through, um, and those are coming up to, to FYI. So there's a little thing on here. If you're, you're interested, you want to do more on how you can help and get involved, um, you can write your name down. We'll, we'll be in contact with you. The office will uh, reach out to you. But yeah, we, we need help with that, and, and that's a great that's a great thing. That's a great problem to have. Um, and we want to build into that generation, and we want to, uh, to make disciples um, of, of all people, of all ages here at Washington Church, including our kids, and especially our kids. So um, please prayerful, prayerfully consider volunteering in that way. All right. Uh, turn with me to the book of Psalms. Okay, go way to the left, about in the middle almost. Psalm 86 is where we're going to be this morning. And uh, before we get to Psalm 86, I just want to share briefly with you, um, just to run up to that. So we're, we're going to start a series on 1 John here at Washington Church. And I had, I had this great retreat a couple of months ago where I got to get away with the Lord and just spend the entire day, and, and he kind of put it on my heart to do 1 John, the epistle of 1 John. And so we're going to spend the entire year um, studying 1 John, and we're just going to go through it slowly and see what the Lord has to say to us. And there's a lot of just richness and depth in 1 John. And so I took two commentaries with me on the plane, um, and reading them and getting ready and, pre- and preparation, and, and the plan, the original plan was to, to start this morning and and then as I sat down with it, I just felt like, I, I felt like the Lord was saying, no, I want you to wait on that. Um, and I was like, okay. And this came like Wednesday after I'd spent like four hours working on my sermon for Sunday. I was like, okay. Um, so now I'm down to Thursday and, fr- and Friday. And usually I started on Tuesday and each day work on my message leading up and even on Saturday. Um, and so now I have Thursday and Friday left. And, and I was like, all right, Lord. I hear that, so we're going to start that on the 24th, um, because next Sunday, uh, Refreshing Place will be here, and so, so the Bishop Chris Rowell and I will be teaching together. The week after that, um, Pastor Don's coming back, and he's teaching on the 150th, which will be awesome. And then we start, uh, on the 24th, we'll start First John, and that same night, we'll, we'll do our community gatherings, and so that'll fit well. And so I was like, all right, Lord, what is it that you want to say to your people? And so it was this beautiful, okay, well... I'm, you know, running out of time here on, on preparation-wise, um, and Lord, what is it you want to say? And I just sat in prayer, and I asked that question, Lord, what do you want to say to the people of Washington Church? And almost right away, it came to me. He said, tell them I want their whole hearts. And I was like, okay, I can say that. So this morning's message is, the Lord wants your whole heart. Now on to communion, you know. And so I started to look at scripture passages on that. Well, what are scripture passages that talk about the whole heart? Because this is not anything that's new. This is, this is an idea that's been around for a long, long time. From the beginning, the Lord has wanted our whole hearts from his creation. And that hasn't been the case. And so as I was going through some passages, and I knew, I knew some passages, and, and then I was doing some study, and, and Psalm uh, 86 came. And, and so we're going to spend time in Psalm 86, two Two primary verses, but, but uh, I'm going to read three just to give you context. And this is what the psalmist says. Verse 11. It says, teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever, for great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths, from the realm of of the dead. So the psalmist starts off in, in verse 11. He, he says, Teach me your way, Lord, that I may rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. That first part of the phrase, teach me your way. So apparently it's something that we need to learn. It doesn't just come naturally. And what's really fascinating about that word way, and, I'm, and I love words and I love languages, and, and, and oftentimes in English we miss things, but and the word way is actually the word in Hebrew, derek, which is the word road. So like Central Avenue out there is a road. Or the sidewalk maybe in your neighborhoods, that would be considered a road. But one of the cool things about Hebrew is Hebrew actually has a very small vocabulary, list of vocabulary. Compared to Greek, compared to English and, other, and many other languages. And because it has such a small vocabulary, each word means 
10 times more than the average word means. And so, and also in the Hebrew, there's this other layer, especially in the scriptures of when it says something to you, like, like go in the way or walk down the road, it means you're actually physically walking down the road, but most of the time it actually means more than that. It's not just physically what you're doing. And so whenever the scriptures, especially in the Old Testament, talks about roads or ways, it's actually like how you should be living your life. It's the journey that you're on. So it's this, it's this metaphor of, yeah, you're physically walking down a road, and then that happens in life, but actually the life that you're living is a way unto itself. And so which way are you walking? Which way are you heading? Which way are you going? So the psalmist says, teach me your way, Lord. There's other scripture passages that talk about this, just to give you an example. Jeremiah 6.16 6, says this, this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look. Ask for the ancient paths. Ask where the good way is, and you will find rest for your soul. So the prophet Jeremiah is is the Lord is speaking to him, and he's sharing this with the people of Israel. And he's telling them, he's saying several things in this packed verse. He's, He's saying, stand there and ask for these ancient paths. And then he goes on to say, Ask where the good way is. Again, way, road, journey, the way of going about it. And so apparently, according to God, there is actually, there's a way that we should be walking, and that way is really old. Like, there from the beginning. Like, God had a a way or a plan for humanity to walk or to be or to function, and that's been around forever, but often neglected by people. Because they didn't realize it, because nobody told them about it, because they didn't seek God in that way. But there's a crossroads you come to, and there's decisions that you make, and you're going to decide, are you going to take the ancient path, the way that God wants you to be, or are you going to take the other way? And if you take that ancient path, if you walk in that way, what happens is you'll find rest for your soul. And also that, that understanding of rest is, is also in, in Hebrew comes from the, the idea that the Hebrew people were desert people. We often forget about that because we don't live in deserts. Well, especially here in, in northwest Ohio, we live among trees and, and beautiful lush spaces. But they lived in deserts or what they call wilderness in, in the scripture, so barren land. And so you journey through that and you walk and, and every once in a while you need to come to a place where you need to rest. Oasis. <clears throat> trees, springs in the middle of, of the desert, or places where you can stop and find shade from the sun. That's the rest, where your soul is renewed, where you get your energy back so you can continue your journey. And Jeremiah is saying, or God is saying through Jeremiah, if you take that ancient path, that way that God wants you to go, you will find rest for your soul. Almost something that you carry with you. It's not just looking for the next oasis or the next watering hole, but you carry your own inside of you. And that phrasing, rest for your souls, should remind us of a, of a scripture passage where Jesus says this in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heaven burdens, and I will give you rest. Remember when Jesus says this? You guys, are you guys with me? You remember when Jesus says this? Okay, all right. Or maybe it's the first time you've heard this verse before, and that's okay too. But Jesus is drawing on Jeremiah's words when he says this. And if you go farther into Matthew 11, you eventually get to, to verse 30, and he talks about, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Right? He's building on that rest image. And in, in that time that Jesus lived, the rabbis, when they taught, they would, ta- they would teach, and they'd have their teachings, and that teaching was actually called a yoke. And so when Jesus teaches and he says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, he's saying, the teachings that I give you will bring rest for your soul. Because I can tell you, it's not that Jesus' teachings are easy. They're actually very challenging if you try to live them out. Especially, you know, go to Matthew 5, 6, and 7 this week and, and you can see what I mean. But when Jesus says this, he says, there's rest in my way that I'm providing for you. Because his teachings are the way. Remember what, what, uh, what Psalm 86, 11 said, teach me your way. And so Jesus is saying, if you learn from me and you take my yoke on, you will find rest. If you take my teachings and you embed them into your body, into your soul, into your very being, that will bring rest to you. 
And that's what Jesus is inviting us into. How many of you guys need rest this morning in your life or in your soul? I would think most of us do. I do. There's another great passage that we need to bring up if you're talking about ways and roads and journeys. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father through me. And so again, this metaphor of a way, a road, a journey, a way of being. And Jesus is saying, at the end of the day, I am the ultimate way. I am the way. And I can tell you, there are other ways, but there's only one way that leads to God. There's only one journey and path that we can take that leads to eternal life in a relationship with the Father. That's through Jesus. And that way, that journey, bring, gives, not only gives us life, but it brings rest to our souls. And that's that invitation that is being given there. Psalm 86, go back to Psalm 86. Teach me your way, which is really a road, Lord, that I may walk or rely on your faithfulness. Give me an undivided heart, the second part of that verse, that I may fear your name. The the New American Standard actually translates Psalm 86 better from the Hebrew into the English. It says, teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. And then it says, unite my heart to fear your name. That original phrase, undivided heart, is actually not what the Hebrew says. The Hebrew actually says, unite my heart. That means bring it together. And if if the psalmist is saying, bring my heart together as though it's one, that means it's not one. Because if it was one, he wouldn't have to ask the Lord to unite his heart. And so I want to sit with that, that understanding of what does that mean to have our whole hearts, to wholeheartedly be, be able to come before the Lord and offer all that we are. Because that's what God wants from us. He wants a unified heart within our beings. There seems to be a direct correlation between the road that we walk down and the journey that we're on and our ability to have a unified heart. Those things go together. They correspond with one another. And I know forever, growing up, it's, it's like you give your life to Jesus and then I have seen people all around me who profess to be followers of Christ, but you look at their life and their li- life doesn't line up with what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So they, they receive the Lord into their life, I have no doubt about that, but there seems like very little change happens in that way, and there seems to be a direct correlation between what Jesus is saying and what the psalmist is saying, and that, that is, there's a connection between the united heart we have and the way we live our lives. And so perhaps we need to, to reevaluate that if we feel separated or if we feel like we're, we are all over the place in a way that we look at our lives and say, how does our life correspond in that way? Because the word heart in, in, in Hebrew is actually lab, and lab means your mind and your heart. It's both those, the Hebrews saw that as both one and the same. So there's a direct correlation between my mind and what I'm thinking about and my heart and what my heart receives. And as much as we want to be, we, don't, we can't separate those two things. But oftentimes we try and function as, as though that's true. And the Lord is inviting us into a single focus, a single mindset, and a single heart. But what you're thinking about most has your attention and has your heart. Whatever your eyes gaze on, there's your heart. Your heart's right there in that place. So here we are in the fall, right? Fall is starting. We're transitioning out of summer. We're coming into a place where kids are going back to school, except you Michiganders, Welcome to the party. You get to start on Tuesday, I think. But everybody else has been in school. Okay? Fall sports is starting. We have activities for kids that are going on. Vacations seem to be coming to an end. And, and activities build into high gear. And we get into these modes, especially as families, where it's kind of go, 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 go. And there are so many things that are pulling at our attention, calling to us to be this way or to be that way. And just for a moment, I want to speak to us in kind of different people groups around this divided heart or undivided heart or whole heart that the Lord is inviting us into. I want to start with parents, with young kids, and especially moms. If if you're a traditional mom and you're at home with your kiddos, you have, there seems to be this obligation of ways, a way to be in our culture, in our life when we look around us and we see other parents and how they function and how they are. 
and getting our kids into the right schools and the right activities and the right this and the right that seems to be the, the overarching mentality that we are focused on in that way. And those are good things. There's right programs and they, those help form and shape our kids. But all those things going on has a cost that comes with it. So we need to be mindful of that. What is the most important thing, I would ask you? Where is your gaze? Because where your gaze is, your heart is. What does it look like for the Lord to unite your heart around your family and your children? And this is, these are questions that I'm going to pose to you, and I don't have answers for them. This is, between, this is the work that you and the Lord need to do, or you and your spouse need to do, or, or you need to spend some time with, with the Lord around this. What is the most important thing that you can be doing for your children? I'll speak to those who are working outside the home or providing for your families, and especially you as dads, you as fathers. You have a desire to accomplish, to achieve, to provide for your family, and that is admirable and good. But there's also an element, I, as I talk to, to guys, they find themselves stuck in these loops of like also keeping up with everybody else. And so what kind of home do I purchase and what, what does my car payment look like? And all of a sudden I find myself stuck in a certain lifestyle or in a certain job because I've created this, this monster and I live in it now. Where is your focus? What is the Lord inviting you to? What is, where is your gaze? Because that's where your heart is. What does it look like to unite, have your heart united around your job that you have? What God has called you into? What does that look like? What's the invitation that God has for you? What does it look like for the Lord to unite your heart around your career? And what is the most important thing that you can be doing? Those of you who are going back to school as students, I'd say the same thing. What is the desire? Where is your focus? What do you, what do you, where is your worry? Where is the anxiety coming from? Is your focus in the right place? What is God inviting you into? Because what you look at is what is connected to your heart. What does it look like for the Lord to unite your heart around your studies and your school? What is God inviting you into? Because you know you're not just there to, to learn scholastic things. God has greater plans than just that. That's important and that's valuable. We need to learn those things. But God is putting you around people all the time that don't know Jesus who don't have hope, and you have hope to bring to them. So more than just math and science and English and history, you carry with you the truth of the Savior of the universe. Rely on the Holy Spirit to guide you. Those of you who have the privilege of not having to work anymore, who are blessed enough not to have to go to work, I love you all. But I will remind you that your call in life doesn't end when your pension begins or Social Security kicks in. You still have a call as well. God has something for you to be doing. Where is your gaze? Where is your heart? What do you need to be focusing on? What is the most important thing that you are to be doing? What does it look like for the Lord to unite your heart around what he's calling you into right now? Again, these are prayers that I would encourage you to take into your prayer closet. No matter where you are in life, that's what it means. There's a way to function and a way to be, and your heart's desire should be to find that way because in that way is rest for your soul. And in that way is purpose and calling and meaning in life. But it's so easy to be distracted and called away by the other things that are around us, and we get, we get caught up in those things so simply and so quickly and so subtly that we realize, hey, I'm standing at those crossroads and I'm not walking down the ancient path. What does it look like to back up? Because here's the good news. At any time, it's as simple as coming before the Lord and saying, Lord, I repent of the way I've been walking and I, want, I give it to you and I want to walk in your way instead. Because I want my soul to find rest in you. Because that's what we were designed to do. That's what we were created for. In verse 12 after we look at that, these ways that the Lord teaches us these things, the same way that Jesus said this, and <clears throat> we learn these ways and we find rest in these ways, and there's something that happens when we ask the Lord to unite our hearts. And this is what verse 12 says, I will praise you, Lord my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. It's a beautiful response to the request in verse 11. But what I, what's important for us to realize is this is what happens 
when we submit ourselves to the way. When we walk in this way. See, verse 12 is, is directly connected to verse 11 coming to pass. So if verse 11 comes to pass, teach me your way so that I can walk in it and I can find rest for my soul. And when that happens, the direct result of that is verse 12. If that happens, when that happens, when my heart is united in that way and I begin to walk in the way that I should walk, then I will praise you. And, and my heart will become unified because, Lord, you will make it unified and I will glorify your name forever. I have no idea what the time frame between verse 11 is and verse 12 is. In the, for the psalmist or for us, I can't answer that for us. And it probably didn't happen overnight. It was probably years and years and years of transition and change, of surrendering that over to the Lord. But sometimes it can happen in that moment if we're willing to submit ourselves in that way. But it's a beautiful thing to be invited into that space because here's the good news. All God wants is everything. That's it. That's all the Lord requires of you is everything. And I, and I think many of us are content to give God what we are willing to give God, but not everything. And so it's a lifetime. It, it, and, and when we have that mentality, it extends our, our sanctification process. Because it will happen. You will be sanctified. Whether it's, it's it, you're in process now, so w- whether it's in this process now or when you're face to face with Jesus, one way or another, you will be made whole and right and righteous. But the beautiful thing is that the, that's how the Lord sees you. He sees your potential and he sees what you will become because he sees Jesus when he sees you. Because of the work that Jesus did on the cross. And so we have the opportunity to step into that now and to walk in that way that brings rest for our soul. Or we can continue to fight against that and find our own way. And we feel the splinters of that as we move in that way. But that's the invitation for this morning. That's the journey. It's, Lord, do I want a united heart? And in that united heart, I want to give that over to you exclusively. That the only way to do that is to walk in the way that God has for you. And so this is the invitation for us this morning. That's it. I'm done. Maybe I should, maybe I should uh, just ask God every Sunday, what is it you want me to say? And my sh- sermons will be shorter. But I want to give us a, a time of prayer. So if Kelly, if you'd come up and just play. And we're just going to come before the Lord. Before we come to communion, the communion table, I want us to just spend some time as a people. Coming before the Lord and asking, Lord, would you reveal to me in what parts of my life is my heart not united? Is it divided? Lord, what have I been seeking after? What ways have I been chasing after instead of chasing after you? And then we're just going to give whatever space is needed. And, and then we'll transition. I'll invite the, the communion servers to come up just in a couple moments, but I just want to give us a moment to do that. So would you, would you join me in prayer right now? Let's just come before the Lord. Let's just set everything down. We just say, Lord, we confess that your ways are better than our ways. That our hearts have been divided We realize we want them to be united. We realize you want all of us. You want all of who we are. You want everything. God, we've been looking this way and looking that way, and our gaze has been in many other places besides you. And we come back to you from time to time, and that's good. But God, you want us to be staring at your face all the time. You want us to be walking on the road, on the path that you've set before us all the time not just sometimes, not just stumbling across it. So as we come before the Lord, I just invite you on your own, just to ask this question. Holy Spirit, in what way have I been walking down a different road or a different path? Would you reveal that to me? Just sit with that question. Just keep asking the Lord. Wait for him to show you what it is.
So as the Lord begins to, to just show you things, just lay those down at his feet. Just repent of those things. Lord, I give you this. I give you that. Whatever it is, whether it's activities or things at work or things at home or things are the busyness of life. God wants it all. Just lay it down at his feet. the Lord begins to show you things, just end with a simple prayer of asking God to unite your heart in the same way the psalmist asked. Father, would you unite my heart around your way? stay in that place and I'm just going to share with us over communion Father we thank you for the gift of your son Jesus we thank you for his body and his blood his life that was laid down for us so that we could be made whole so the relationship with the father could be restored and the curtain was torn in two so Lord we thank you for this bread that we take and we thank you for the cup And as we gather, we remember you and we are thankful for that, Lord. And I pray if there are people in this room that don't know you, Lord, that they would give their life to you even right now. Surrender themselves and just say, Jesus, would you come into my life? Would you forgive me of my sin? Would you be my God? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for providing the way. Thank you for how much you love us. And Lord, we gather and, and we do this in remembrance of you, just as we, you asked us to do. I want to invite the communion servers to come up right now to the stations. And I invite you, just where you're at, just stay with the Lord for whatever your need is and have that conversation about ways and roads and journeys and what's going on in life and he'll show you if you keep asking what it is you need to let go of and surrender and keep asking for that united heart because God wants to unite your heart so that you could give it to him and when you feel led and you feel ready you are welcome to come to the table and receive the body and the blood of Christ
Show me who you are in faith. 
We have one, one more thing we're going to do this morning, so I would encourage you just to have a seat. I'm going to invite Corey and Peggy to come on up. Corey and Peggy are leaving this week to go on a mission trip to Brazil, and uh, which is awesome. Come on up here, Peggy. And uh, this is not like a church-wide thing that you didn't miss out on, um, and they'll explain a little bit of that, but uh, we wanted to bring them up and have them share about how and why they're going. Um, and then how we could be praying for them as we kind of lay hands on them and send them off. So this is something they, they found on their own, um, and they're going, and they're leaving Thursday, and they're going to be gone for a while, 15 days or so. Um, so we'll be holding them up in prayers. They're gone, and we can't wait to, to, for them to come back and hear the stories that they're going to share, but also we'll keep uh, their families who remain behind in prayer as well. Where um, it's a mission trip with Randy Clark and like 89 other people like us that will be going to Kachuba? Curubita. Oh. <laughs> and to Ponta Grossa and possibly one other city. And the churches are huge. They have like 10, 15, 20,000 people in the churches, and we're going to heal and do deliverance on as many people as they'll put in front of us. So, yeah, we're really excited. I, um, it's a really cool, just the real quick, a uh, year ago, the staff, we always leave and go on a retreat together to pray over Washington Church. And during that time of prayer, I felt like God said, Brazil, but just Brazil. So then I took it to the team and was like, what is Brazil? And we have this big whiteboard where we write all the words that we feel like God shared. Didn't really think much of it because nothing else really came forward. And then like a calendar year later, Peggy walked into my office and was like, I'm going to Brazil. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And she's like, and you're coming with me. I was like, that's less cool. Uh, but there's been amazing provision and a lot of people have prophesied over us and we're super excited and we're excited to go definitely to be a blessing but I also think there's going to be impartation and anointing and we're going to bring back some amazing testimony and things for Washington Church so so we're excited about uh, yeah. as far as praying for us please pray for our families as we're gone for Libby and Kelly and Peggy's whole family and um I'll just give you a snippet of kind of the intensity of this type of trip. Um, we were, they gave us like an FAQ and I was like, oh, what are the, it was like the top five things you should do to prep for the trip and as you leave. And I was thinking like, oh, bring an extra phone charger, make sure you have layers for weather. And the number one thing was find three new people that you trust to pray over you at least three times a day because you'll be doing ministry for eight to 12 hours a day. And so, uh, yeah, pray please that we will be covered and that, um, that's way more than what we're, uh, yeah, so we're, we're just ready to be blown away. Early morning uh, to late at night, we're yeah, working. That's going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> so pray for us. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, amen. So you just need a different kind of charger is what you're saying. Yeah. Not, don't, worry, don't have to worry about your phone. Um, would members of the, of the uh, missions team come on up here or some of the elders and just lay hands on them as we pray for them? He's coming. He's putting his kid down. All right. Would you join me, Washington Church? Father, we lift these two up to you in this trip that you've called them on, that you've set them aside for such a time as this. We pray for Corey and Peggy and the journey that they're going to go on. And we thank you for what and how you've shaped them into who they are um, as they go. And we thank you for who they will become when they come back. We pray for the time that they are there, Lord. May they set aside time for you and to be with you and um, seek your face. May you reveal yourself to them in so many different ways. May you use them, Lord, in an unconditional way. Um, and may they be overjoyed um, with the goodness of God as they return. And I, and I pray, Lord, 
that um, when they come back, not only will they be different, but that we will be different as well. And we pray over their families as they go. Um, the Arnos family and the Byrne family, Lord, watch over them. And we as Washington Church hold them in the responsibility of joining in with that. But we join, Lord, together in praying for them. And we lift all these things up in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. We look forward to hearing more when you guys get back. Please stand as we uh, partake in the benediction. This morning, we're going to do something different from the benediction. Um, we're going to, uh, this is Psalm 86, 11. And I want to invite you, let's just say this together. And I, and I would invite you to make this uh, a prayer of your heart this week as you leave this place. Um, carry these words with you. Memorize this scripture and, and keep this in front of you and keep coming before the Lord with this. So let's say this together. Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Amen. Go in peace.